morning, everyone. If you're here in the U.S., if you're not here in the U.S., afternoon. Well, I think all three of us are in the U.S. The recording might not be. Ah. Hello. Morning. Sorry, I'm having some internet difficulties, so I'm on the phone. Yeah. I do know that problem. We might be getting on this. We'll give people probably another minute or so. I was going to let James run today, but he's on a phone, so I will probably run it today. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Where is this uh, going to be published, the uh, OCI um, doc that were artifacts? Doc we'll for probably talk about it in the main working group. Um, the loose plan here is to, um, we don't actually need a lot of pass off, sign off from the um, from OCI, but we'll probably do first is go back once we think we're in a good spot to the working group and say, okay, everybody, does this look okay? Are we okay with this representing what we think it should be? Um, and it'll be good because we have people from the, who are, are mainly involved with the, the CNCF side. And we have people who are involved with both. We have people who are involved mainly with the Bytecode Alliance side. And so like having basically web assembly and all that together, we'll say, okay, pretty sure this is what we want. And then we'll go get OCI to be like, yes, you're okay. Like it looks spec compliant. And then we'll probably decide in the meeting where to go. I mean, it seems like we're going to be probably doing somewhere within component model, maybe, um, is the what Luke had suggested last time. But I think we can talk about all the options, whether it lives in a CNCF repo, whether it lives in a bytecode alliance repo, whether it lives in something like um, the component model. And then we'll just start publicizing it. Which uh, tools do you think need to be like, particularly aware of the spec like um uh because i know there's like some logic in some of the oci tools to like publish things in a particular way um, we'll, we'll probably have to keep doing what we do now but what i'm hoping for a long term like what i mean by that is we have like the like ORS tooling or like the rest tooling those kind of things that we are what people use to push a lot of things artifacts all all sorts of stuff so we'll probably be still doing that, but I'm hoping that with kind of the standard thing that we're doing, we'll be able to to build it in to other types of tooling as as things go along. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I think we all want Wasm to become well used enough that it's something people would want and just like mainline everything. So that's the hope, but we'll see where we actually get to. So, okay, well, um, based on, we're just double checking, um, double checking what we were talking about last time. Um, we wanted to go through um, the, or finish going through the config, which I think we should be able to do today. We got through probably the hairiest stuff last time, but um, we'll go ahead and, and go, I'll pull up the working doc and we'll work on that. So those who are coming back and looking at the notes, um, we'll try to take some notes in there, but I'm going to be working in the working doc. So there might not be as many meeting notes. So you can take a look there. Um, Sorry, it's hard to do both. Uh, I unfortunately cannot juggle. 
Um, so let me go ahead and share the tab for that. Just making sure I got everything up. Share screen. Really wish Zoom could still sh could share like tabs. But oh well. Okay. So our anyway. Oh, and welcome, Brandon. Um okay. So um welcome everyone to this. You already kind of got a little pre-discussion on the call. Um this is the OCI subgroup that we've been putting together and working on the um, OCI specification for storing WebAssembly, particularly WebAssembly components. So we're going to continue working on um, the things today. Once again, no, it's not going to be here um, for that much. If anyone does want to help, they can, but we're um, going to be focusing on the um, OCI design. So we're going to keep just burning down through the config, um, config media type um, format. And um, there's just basically off of the proposed stuff that we already have, um, there's two things we need to talk about. I figure I'm going to start easy this time and go a little bit harder towards the end about what other stuff we want to pull out, but it's these top fields and what other fields we need. Um, I'm going to make the assumption, we decided like the architecture is just going to be WASM for now um, to, because it could be a component or it could be a module. Um, do we want to support different architecture types here and say like it can be WASM 32 or like and then WASM component or WASM P like there's there's been a whole bunch of discussions around target target tuples and all sorts of things. So I'm just curious. This is the only one I was like, we have this, do we decide to go like WASI IP2 for that and then just call the architecture WASM? This is what you would kind of discuss. I want to see if people have any other thoughts there. Making sure we're okay, because we kind of said that last time. So I just wanted to triple check. Okay. So created an author um, seems really straightforward. Are there any other like other any other big top level fields we should have around in the config media type that don't belong, you know, like up here is part of the manifest? Brandon, are there um, any other like custom types that you've seen in the past where they've had a lot more data? Or is this kind of the typical standard? I think you're looking close. I was going to go check those CI stuff to see if we're still using author or not, because I know we've got a annotation for that as well. Okay. I mean, if there's an official annotation, I think we can drop it from here because that could be nicer to use than having to go inspect the custom config type for people. Yeah, I think um, when I was filling this out, I initially just went through what was in the config media type for, uh, you know, standard container type and pulled out the ones that looked like we might want to reuse. And that's how I ended up with this set. Um, yeah, that's what I figured when you when we first looked at this. So, yeah, um, okay. and it's still defined in OCI. We've got both of them there. So, you just okay. So, okay, so having them twice is kind of the normal thing right now still. I don't know if it's normal to have both. I suspect a lot of people just use one or the other, but um, it, okay. it's in the spec, so no need to change anything. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to say... Um, I'll say right here that... The, oops, not that one. Here or as an annotation. Okay, perfect. See, that was the easy part. So we'll keep that. Um, we've gone through what we want in the components. We had other types of things have had like a config that we pass in. Um, <clears throat> the The debate is whether or not we should have this config kind of thing inside of here, where you can pass additional, you know, like these variables, volumes, working dir, that kind of thing, because um, generally those get exposed through like the WASI interfaces. So you'd be getting this through like runtime config or WASI env or whatever those kind of things would be. Um, so do um, do we need a so, config section here? So I, I, I'll add a little bit onto that. I think this, so I added this specifically for like container runtimes, right? whereas I know there's a bunch of configuration that you can put into um, 
for, for WASI and you can load it through the run times and config things like that. But in run WASI, we're also configuring a, um, like the, the namespaces and container environment. And then we run the runtime inside of that. And the idea here was that we might want to be able to configure some baseline things for that optionally, um, specifically maybe volumes, because if they're running it inside Kubernetes, they're going to expect volumes. And so we want to be able to map those volumes into um, into the, the container so that they're accessible. Um, and so that's where this came from. Um, I, I would expect like environment variables for the particular run, running runtime, like the WASM runtime to be able to read those from um, the various components that are pulling in, but we might want the initial like environment to have some of those environment variables as well. I don't okay. know if that makes sense, but no, that, that does make sense. Coming. Yeah, that sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you there, James. Yep, no problem. Yeah, so I, this was for me like optional. Um, if you were wanted to be able to specify like this is the environment in which we're running in, not so much the runtime information um, that the WASM runtimes are, are using. Is it possible that in a deployment context that the right place to put some of that kind of runtime configuration information would be like, say, in like the runtime class? Of like a in like a Kubernetes setting or something or something else, I wonder if maybe the the image is really just supposed to be just the code I want to run. Where in particular, I'm, I'm not assuming any particular runtime. Um, so I, I think I don't think the runtime class has that information in Kubernetes. Um, it might be getting the names wrong, but um, my memory was like the runtime class was where you got into the details of you're saying this particular like you know build of you know spin or wasm cloud or or or, or slight is what I want to run my wasm and I'm going to set it up. You know that seemed like the place where you're specify where you're intentionally wanting to talk about the concrete implementation that's going to run this wasm. Is that not the case? Uh, yes, yes, I think so, but it doesn't have things like entry point and volumes and those types of that type of information. What's it, so or volumes is a like are these volumes as used as part of the implementation or are these volumes as as exposed to WASM? Volumes as an exposed to the container, which would be available to the runtime, like the host runtime to be able to access if configured. Well, does the WASM get to see these volumes? Are these like file system stuff that is visible to the WASM or is this used as part of the runtime as part of its you know implementation? Um, so, so the way we're handling it right now is we map these volumes into the container and then expose them to the runtime. So if the, like, if, um, the component was trying to read a file, it would be mapped in through the volume and, and they would be able to see that file. Now, is, is that usual in like in a Kubernetes context, once you put that information, like this container has access to this volume that's independently defined, when, isn't that in a different place often, like in a you know a pod spec or something else? I, I forget, or deployment, so or I forget the in terms. The, in the container image, non-WASM version of this, you can define volumes inside of the container image. Mm -hmm. You're only defining the destination, not the source. And so Docker, Kubernetes, and everything else will give you an anonymous volume at that point. Cool. So just under dig into the, un, understand what you're saying. So that you said the destination is where it shows up in the virtual file system. In, in, in the so container file system in Kubernetes. So if, mm -hmm. if you ran this container and it said, my database directory is going to be X. Mm -hmm. Kubernetes would assign that a volume automatically, but since you didn't define the source, I don't know if it picks an empty door or something like that. Docker will give you an anonymous volume with just the crazy long user, unique ID that everybody 
eventually finds out is filling up the hard drive. Okay. Um, and and is that's um, how those get created? Is it temporary? Like, is in each fresh instance of a container gets a fresh one? Every container would be a unique one. Yeah. And then when the container instance is like torn down, does it get collected? Not positive on Kubernetes. Docker depends on how you run it. Um, if you spin up Docker and say I'm spinning down this entire stack with with um compose, I think some of those will go away when you say delete everything. But otherwise there are ways they stick around and fill your hard drive up. Okay. Well that's that's useful context. So so it's it seems like for this problem, this use case of I want to create like a, a fresh, you know, uh temporary kind of anonymous file system mount. With con components, we, we have a new tool that, you know, maybe isn't available to containers, which is, you know, WASIvert, which is we can basically synthesize a virtual file system. And in doing so, we allow the component to control a lot more aspects of this and decouple it from the runtime entirely. And what that means is that same component, when I run it outside of an OCI context, when I just, you know, get a dot WASM and run it on a WASM time, it'll, it'll have the same behavior. If configuration information in the OCI manifest ends up determining how this thing runs at runtime. Now that's part of the semantics of this thing. So if I take the WASM out and run in a one time, it, it'll break because I've lost critical bits of what it means to run. So this is why doing things inside of the component using WASIvert and other sorts of tools to say, well, how do I want my virtual file system to look? It, it gives us that extra degree of portability, which means we can think of this OCI manifest as nothing more than a representation of a component uh, instead of a single file binary, instead of the, the, the WAT text format. So that's a pretty valuable invariant that I'd, I'd like to preserve if at all possible. Um, so for these use cases of we want this volume to be seen by the running WASM code, you know, at runtime. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. In general, a lot of the settings you see in the config or the container images, normal container images, they're setting the default value for things that you can later set at runtime. And so you can later assign a volume, you can later define an environment variable. They're just setting some defaults there that people might want to run it in general. And it has a few downsides. You can't unset certain things. So that is one of the bad parts of that. But anything that you're going to use in WASI that says, hey, we've got this configuration option that people would want to set, and you might want to be able to set a sensible default when you package this up in a container, that would be a good thing to put in the config. Yeah. Yeah, that makes, makes sense for container context. But again, if I want to take a component out of an OCI registry and then run it independently, I kind of want the defaults to come with it because often I depend on them, right? I'm not used to setting them. I'm assuming that they're there. And for that purpose, WASIvert can set defaults. And also we've literally talked about adding default parameters to various imports and functions in components. So that's not yet in the you know 0 0.2, but but it's definitely something we've talked about adding to make it give even more first class support for this. So again, that's the thing we can do inside the component ideally. And then we just get that extra degree of portability developer experience. I think I'm of I'm of two minds on this. I totally get where you're coming from with this one, Luke, where it like to so here's the thing. I understand because this is an OCI specification or sub subset of it technically. It's supposed to it's supposed to mount with OCI and people understand a lot of OCI things to be containers. So on the one hand I understand like having something that is entirely optional that based on my knowledge of this, this wouldn't actually impact the runtime of the the module itself. This is basically like defining, hey, if you are running in a container runtime, here are the mappings for some of your defaults or whatever would be what I'd imagine this this could be. But on the other hand, and this is the the kind of more general concern, is is in on that hand it makes sense, right? Because we're coming in a container space, but also like okay, if we add this kind of config for a container, then like, what if, you know, like Wasm Cloud wants to add their own custom one? Or what if Wasm Edge wants to add their own custom one? Like, I worry about setting a precedent of saying like, it's easier to explain this one for me because it's saying, hey, this is still container, like it's still a first container first tool that people are used to using. So it makes a little bit more sense. And we could say anything else wouldn't be allowed as like a custom type of config section, but I do worry about it being like, well, I we need our custom config for a runtime. Um, but I I do think this could be something still optional. It do, I will say though that even even if I'm okay with it being an optional thing that a container runtime would use for it, 
it does feel a little janky <laughs> to me to have like this optional thing just for the container container part, but I'm not sure if we can or can't work around that. So uh, James, you're the one who's been working on all the Renoisi stuff. I'm curious, like, do you see another way around this or is it just something that kind of has to be there? Um, no, actually, so I think right now we're not setting any of that. Um, and I it, and I think your, your point of like, it being a something that, you know, all these other runtimes might want to have their own configuration kind of seems like a uh, open-ended thing there. And so I, right now we're not using that for like our, our demo applications and things like that. And I was just thinking like folks might want to set this type of thing, but I'm, I think I'm okay with leaving it off for now and going and implementing it and seeing how it works. Um, I think the one thing that we are using currently is the entry point. And I think we have that as a list of something to uh, discuss. It's um, and so I, I think maybe we maybe we can talk about that a little bit. The the other one that um, came up for me too in this space was um, setting things like the uh, file permissions and the directory permissions and like WASM time. Um, and I wasn't sure where that information. That's something that we do try to set up in. Um, when we're when we're configuring the runtime, we do set those file permissions on the WASM configuration, and I wasn't sure where that fits into this as well. Um, Luke, is that something that would be done like through WASIVert? Sorry, um, sorry, I missed just a little part of the question. We're talking about the entry point and how you say what's the entry point of this. Well, there we have that, but then the the follow up, James. I'm going to try to repeat it for my own understanding here make sure i got it was the they right now when they do set things up inside of run wazi they set like directory permissions and stuff like at the like wasm level to say like oh you're this is the directory you're allowed this access to or whatever is that something that's going to be expected to be done through wazi vert or is it expected to be done more oh, yeah. at that like low yeah level sorry WASM yeah i miss i missed that part yeah this is actually i guess a, a great reason why it's it's valuable to have this part of the producer tool chain and not part of the runtime because there are so many things you might want to configure about how your virtual file system works. Like, you know, like, is it read only? Is it, uh, you know, is it ever flushed back to some persistent storage and on what occurrence is it, you know, eagerly or like, you know, so th there's a lot you want to configure and directory permissions is one such thing. And yes, so that's, that's totally in the domain of what Vazi vert should allow you to configure. I don't think it does now, but there's, there's, you know, it's, it's, it's right um, in the, in the squares in the set of use cases that, that we talk about of, of why you want to be able to virtualize your own file system. Okay, so yeah, if, if that's covered there, then I think that answers our configuration. Like when, we, when we're when we setting up the runtime, um, then we wouldn't provide that. That would be provided by WASD Yeah. You know, it, it might be worthwhile to I don't know if the context is should be in this meeting, but like to actually go through Wazi Vert, what it could do, what it can't do, and like just to give everybody, you know, an understanding of that, since that's a lot of this is mapped to that. Hey Luke, are you by chance available next week on Tuesday at this time? Because we could do this if having a little overview for Wazi Vert because the cloud native space is 100% like everyone's going to use it. I know that, but cloud native space is 100% going to be the one that's going to be like, Ooh, me want to give um, kind of thing. Like, would you be willing to maybe kind of give an overview of Wazi Vert and stuff in the, in the normal working group meeting next week? Cause I don't think we have anything on the agenda yet. Yeah. Yeah. I can certainly give something really, really short, but uh, if we want anything at all uh, talking about it in, in depth, you know, we, maybe we can bring in somebody, some folks who worked on it, like we can invite guy or, Calvin, maybe you've done some stuff with Vazivert too now? Uh, or, or maybe Danny, Danny more as than I have uh, recently, but I know Guy and Dan Goman are uh, on it. More. Let, let me reach out to Guy. I mean, yeah. I, I know Guy. Um, let, right. Let's reach out to Guy and then see if we can do it. Um, it's just going to be probably a month or so because of KubeCon before we get to that. So, um, yeah. but yeah, let's do that. Make sure someone who's like been really on the ground lately with it can kind of say like, here's all your cool demos. Um, I mean, I have to do a demo too at one of my talks. So um, coming up at KubeCon, so.
And, and yeah, you're right. I, I think everyone's going to probably want to be making heavy use and, and a lot of people will be wanting to contribute and extend this, this tool. So we're, we're thinking, so the, is it the next, next meeting is there, but the one after that's is towards scheduled. the end of the month. So, so yeah, we'll be not doing the one in the week of KubeCon. Okay. So are you thinking about doing it next week or no, the... we'll, I'll give guys some more time than, than that. Okay. Um, I might. I, Luke just I, sometimes has a lot of cool presentations and ideas and demos just in his back pocket. So I always ask, and he always tells me no if he doesn't. So it works out great. <laughs> okay. Um, so back to this. I'll I'll make sure we get that on the agenda for the main group because it is probably something we should talk about there. Um, so uh, I'm going to just put a note here around our decision that we're going to remove the config for now, and any config that needs to be done is done through the the WebAssembly tooling such as WasiBird. So is that okay with everybody? The one thing I would think about is if there's anything that you would want to communicate up um, to a Kubernetes or a Docker or whatever other runtime above whatever your runtime is. So those kind of thoughts are like the exposed ports kind of jumps out to me of, hey, is your runtime going to be exposing a port that someone might want to port forward into for you? set the networking. Is that generally done on this config block, Brandon? The exposed ports and the, the volume similarly, if you're thinking, hey, I, I'm going to want to send my data off somewhere, give me a place to put it. Um, that's the kind of stuff to consider of if you need to be requesting things from the Docker Kubernetes, something like that to set things up for you, that would be a good thing to think about for this. Yeah, and I don't. I don't think Kubernetes will be the only one. I think it is good to. It would it be worth maybe having like a subset of some of the things that are in this config of saying like here's kind of the basic like information you might want to send up the chain to be like, hey, I have some things that I I could be writing to or sending up to. Is there a way we want to express that? Any ideas here? I mean, volumes and ports are the biggies there. They're kind of like, yeah. am I going to be, um, I can't remember, it's been a while since, does UDP or any other like non-HTTP protocol also like, does that just do through normal ports or do you have to do anything weird? I always forget because. You, you can specify a slash UDP on the end of the port to oh, that's say right. that's UDP port number. Is that for? This is the port I'm going to expect incoming packets on. It, I, it is when you I documenting listen. from the container image producer, artifact producer, that the application inside of this typically will listen on this port. And so you as a runtime potentially might want to forward something into that port. <laughs> right. That like in an H for an HTTP component, that that probably won't be a thing. But for a WASI sockets using, like a WASI CLI main uh, component, you know that that will that will definitely be a thing. So why not for an HTTP? I'm curious how WASI is different there. Uh, so in this case, the the way the interface is defined is an HTTP request shows up, and the the listen loop is expected to be in the host, and so it's just going to listen probably on a standard port. It's, or how how what port it listens on is going to so be configured outside of the WASI. WASI. It's, it's above it's the yeah. runtime itself doing it. Okay. That's right. So it's a little more kind of serverless um, in nature. Yeah, but sockets, it would, because like if you have something yeah. that's running a socket thing, that yeah. could expose it. Yeah. And even with the the volume thing is another interesting interesting thing because with WASIVer, even if you have it, you could say like something is going like this is going to be exposing volumes that I could use or connect to from something else inside of my system. Um and that so is like, an expected yeah. use case, like WASI vir to virtualize a file system in terms of, say, a key value store, you know, as the actual, you know, from the cloud core uh, world, right? Like that's that's totally an expected use case. So, but in that case, the 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 the, the root component would be importing a KV store, and so where that KV store comes from and what it's wired up to, you know, someone higher up has to figure out what to supply when this component imports a KV store. I guess that that it, that information is often though at one level higher than the 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 image manifest, but rather again in a in a pod spec. It's both. 
like I say, the, the container image defines the default and the container image can only define the target inside the container. It can't define the source right. where it's coming from. And so then Got you it. as your pod spec would say, hey, I, I see this image. I know they're exposing all this stuff. Let me start writing up all the wiring of how we inject this stuff. Well, well then that leads to a, a nice symmetry. When we're talking about target facing, WAS, that's exactly the domain of WASI vert because it gets to synthesize what the file system looks like and then ultimately it imports AKV store. And then it's the one layer up that says, all right, well, where did this where did this come from? Um, how, do, how do we wire up this KV store import? So hopefully that lines yeah. up nicely. I think we're going, okay. So I think we're going to need to, this is where I think seeing the concrete example of the WASI vert stuff will probably help with the understanding on this. So here's, here's what I suggest we do to move forward. I think right now we remove this. We make a note that we might want to add something here because I'm guessing we're not going to like finalize, finalize until we get to, you know, the like, because we have to go, get this back to the working group and then also just make sure um, the OCI side is like, yeah, you're not doing anything real dumb. And then we can, um, then we can like say, this is good to go. So what I think we'll do here is maybe note, we'll remove what we have here and say, no, we might need to add in some more stuff here around like saying, Hey, I will have these resources that you can route to like that are, that are available or some sort of like context communicating, cut some more context to a runtime. Um, and then kind of add that in before we finalize the the specification. So, because it sounds like we can get like, based on the previous conversation, it sounds like we can get away without having this, but there's something to be said for like saying, I have said port or I have said thing available. And so I think people need to like probably get their hands dirty with Wazivert and see if it, um, if it meets that expectation that we need or if there's something else that needs to be added. And Wazi Bird is not a finished project yet. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of things that are missing. So are we okay with me removing, adding the note of what we decided on? And then we'll come back and if we need to, we can add in a specific like either subset of the config or just our own defined thing that says what's in there. Is that okay? I'll probably, I'll probably remove all the contents of the config and leave the config header there itself just saying TBD. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's easier to add things in to then subtract things out as yeah. we find them. That was my thinking too. Like if we can make this so that it's like, okay, well, we can always go back and add it. Like this doesn't have to be, this is not like forever written in stone. We can say, okay, well, next version's this, you know, and we just have it, we have it in there. We know that like as the WebAssembly continues to evolve over the next couple of years, that'll probably happen a few times. So I think that's okay. For the doc purposes, just having something in there gives people somewhere to attach the comment to. Yeah. That's true. Perfect. Okay. So, um, for for what it's worth, it from component model people who are who are worried about the OCI kind of bringing in runtime semantics, it's the config field that kind of leads to concern because then it sounds like the runtime semantics is not just defined by WASI and the component model, but 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 also this this other thing. And so, uh, it's I guess it 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 does lead to some concern. I've had people send. <laughs> set concerns my way about this one uh, field yeah i'm going to be very clear here like we're we're there is a tbd talking about what well, i'm talking about what we talked about with the decision i'm going to say tbd like we need to talk about if wazi vert's going to fit this and how it will fit in um i just want to make sure it's very clear for people coming into to this that they they know like yeah. oh wazi vert and here is what we mean link to demo in the like that we hopefully the like guy can get rid of the example that we can do like that's that's what i would hope we can do you know um, the, the the port example is a great example because that does seem like a thing that you, you want to communicate on the artifact because it's like intrinsic to the artifact this is the, you know i'm communicating this information i'm listening i'm going to listen on this port <laughs> if you want to connect to me and we're talking sockets use this port so it's also information you'd want even when oci is not involved if i just want to run a component you know wasm time serve i want to know that port right because that's the default port port I should connect on. So that suggests that actually we want to put this in the components exports. We do theory have value exports and we could have default values. And we've talked about having constant values. So you could have a optional <laughs> value export that is called default port. And it's just a number. And that's a thing that you could put on the component signature. And now it's part of the component, which means it runs and it has meaning even outside of, you know, an OCI context, which I think is, uh, again, stays with that goal of, of these are portable. So anyways, that, that's perhaps a use case that we could uh, address 
Yeah, and those kind of things could go like the component struct level if we get that far. Yeah, um, just like as part of its type information. Yeah, and that that could be used as well. So I think we'll come back. Oh yeah, and, right, right. One level up. You're, or, you yeah, know, like at the up, component right? yeah. component block because if it's in yeah. wit, we could put it there. But totally. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll just make the notes here, like we said. Mm -hmm. Um. Are, are value exports available today? No, they haven't been implemented yet. Okay. Haven't had a strong motivating use case yet, but this might be it. <laughs> okay. So documented in here, now we know like with config stuff, this is there we'll we'll figure this part out. It'll probably be the last thing we end up figuring out. That's fine. Um, but it also sounds like we could make it work even if we don't totally figure it out right now, which is what matters. So that's that's also good. Um okay, that was the last thing we had already put inside of the the config type. Were there any was there anything else we we thought about that needs to go in there that's outside of the component that's either like WASI specific or WebAssembly specific or any other details we might need in here, any other types of things we might need to hint to runtimes. Um, I just wanna make sure we capture any of that inside of this config type if anyone's had any ideas over the past couple of weeks. So I wanted to pick on the root FS for a second. Mm -hmm. um, I know that WASI doesn't have file systems, but that field serves a double duty in container runtimes. It's all of the uncompressed digest of all the layers that are associated with your image. If you ever have two configs with the same digest, they're pointing to the exact same image because all the layers are identical. Um, some people have used the config digest as a way to uniquely identify an image. And so having that root FS in there assures that the, the underlying content is exactly identical. If we get rid of that, potentially you might have two WASM images with the exact same config digest. They're pointing to two entirely different things because the underlying WASI artifact itself is different. So is that different than the, I honestly don't think I've run into this before, so I'm just going to make sure I understand. <laughs> um, so is this different from the actual digest of the like full manifest it's, itself? It's, so your config has a digest. And inside that config is going to be all the file system digest, but don't scroll off of this yet. Okay. Um, each of the layers has a digest. Yep. Those digests are on the layers as they exist on the registry, um, which is typically compressed. So there's going to be gzip to stuff like that. So it's tar gzip for normal container images. The root file system digests that are in the config are the same thing, but uncompressed. They're the exact same entries in a layer digest. It's just uncompressed. So, so is it a is it a, an array of it's, di of digests? It, it's a list of digest, and so okay. just by having those digest of all the layers in there, the config digest is always different if your layers ever change. Okay. And so, it's an extra added complication of the Merkle tree logic. It's something that you shouldn't have to care about. But the reason I'm going to bring it up is that there are people that have depended on that config digest being unique. Um, give you an example: if you ever do a Docker uh, image LS or something like, or if you, um, yeah, if you look at Docker images on the file system, the container image ID, not the container ID, the image ID that Docker will assign you is usually the config digest until they start doing some of their container D upgrades, and so that. That ID is unique as long as that file system is in there. Hmm, that's interesting. I, that makes sense. So, like, I could have like three components in my in my list, and um, and have the like this because this is actually a great example. A lot of people could have this exact config. Um, you know, like I'm just access like this. This is like a demo app or a small application could probably all have the exact same config, but so the the digest of the config media type will be the same probably, and then even though the layers are entirely different, 
So that's that's yeah. the the real world problem. Oh, it, that's this fine. Is you <laughs> is really something you shouldn't have to care about. You should be allowed to have the same config ID for all these things. But I just know in practice, people have depended on this behavior. Okay. Well, that makes it sound like we probably need to have that. Um, is um, hold on. Where did I put that in here? The root FS is that in the? Or is it in layer? Yeah, it's in here somewhere. Okay. Well, this root FS. Okay, root FS yeah. object type layer. Just always set the layers, and then the diff ID is just an array of strings. Array of the hashes. Yep. And that's the digests from the top level, or that's the uncompressed digests from the top level. It's the digests of the uncompressed content. Um, whether or not you make it that, as long as you make it something that is a one for one. You know, relative, I think that's the important part. Okay. I would probably guess just to make it easy on the tooling and everybody else, we just say like it's the exact same SHAs as your as your layers. Um that is a that is a fun side like edge case I had no clue existed and now I'm slightly more terrified about life. Okay. Um let's go ahead. I, I'm thinking we should probably put that in to be as compatible as possible. So anyone have any objections to that? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add that right now. Does it have to does it have to be root FS or can it be just something different just so that it is uniquely identifiable? I mean unique ID that, or <laughs> I mean for Content making hash. this a unique identifier here, you don't need to. For any tooling that might try to parse this, there there are things that parse this file without looking at the config media type they should but there there are tools out there that would just parse it anyway yeah given my experience with back in the back in the olden days when we were like figuring this out for helm um you know it was like the more you can just do what the tools expect the more easy your life is going to be down the line as ugly as it is so I, i'm thinking we probably do it in the exact format expected and then people can come pull it and just grab that that field and do what they need to do with it. Is there Kate a chance F? that they'll assume that it means something containery, but in our component modeling context, it it won't kind of work that way? Like, yes, it's a list of hashes, but it it might not actually. It's not like a bunch of actual real layers, right? It's that could create a file system. So, will it will it break those tools anyways? Hopefully not. Um, we're, we're getting into that undefined territory here where they're already doing, doing something a little bad. We're just trying to minimize how much that we're going to break them. They're, they're going to break one way or another. We're just minimizing the risk. Type was a string, right? Okay, yeah. Type Sorry. layers. Wh which, uh, which shaws did you say were typically referenced as a uh, co compressed as opposed to uncompressed? Each of the layers for the file system. In the top level manifest, they are typically the tar gzip digest. And inside the config media type, they are just the tar digest. Okay, so in the um in the manifest, the the content type would be the compression format. Or in the manifest, the media type on the individual layers would say I'm a tar gzip. Okay. As the media and, type. And you're saying your media type, you're probably having a WASI or something like that in there. Well, I think I was slightly scrolled up in here. So you may be uncompressed point. in both. Or you know, compiled binary. So it doesn't really matter whether you compress it or not. The, there is some value in compression in these binaries. It, I I don't think we have to worry too much, Calvin. I think we just, whatever digest somebody gives us in the manifest, we say, like, if you got your digest, just put those digests back in here. That way you're unique. Um, and then if for some reason that is, I think we'll just double check this when we bring it back to, like, the rest of the OCI group to Brandon to be like, is this okay? <laughs> like, we're just going to do this. Is that fine? And then if, if everyone's okay with it, then we'll... Um, 
do it that way. I've seen my share of people making arbitrary config uh, content out there and they just copy the stuff verbatim just to minimize the number of registries that spit up uh, errors at them. Okay, so let me just decapitalize all the capitalization. Oh, not, not that. So and let's somewhere, document this. Somewhere we'll want to turn off the smart quotes, but I don't think we care too much about that. Right yeah, now. I'm gonna. I just decided after last time, I'm like, I'm gonna wait till we finish editing them and just put it into into like VS Code, format it, and bring it back over. So right now, I'm just dealing with the like eye twitching smart quotes. Um. Okay. Uh, I can never spell that in French. Something like that. Um, <laughs> I'll 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 figure it out. <laughs> and then down here, I'll also make sure we have a note. So. Um. What's the, I guess the root FS is very misleading, I think, um, in this case. So I'm wondering, like, I, I, I think someone had mentioned this to me when I was making a couple of changes to container D. Um, and this, this was a concern, like a security concern in the early implementations of Dockers. It's still, a concern in like the container D implementations or the early versions of Docker security concern I'm aware of is that their IDs that they were pushing around were not digest. They were not content addressable. They were just random strings. And so there was a potential that someone could say, hey, here is the content with the random string of your Ubuntu base image that everybody uses, if that image gets pulled first, that now uh, poisons the entire cache for everybody else. Yeah, bad days that uh, people in a early panic had to rush and try to fix very quickly. Now that everything is content addressable, is this still? That, that eliminated most of these when we were content addressable. And this was very early days of Docker. Yeah, this is bringing back memories um yeah. <laughs> and so so is it still required now if, if we're now content, content addressable everywhere it's the config itself is content addressable all the layers are content addressable the thing that we're working around with this is that some people depend on the config being unique per image and without having these fields inside of the config you could potentially have two configs for two different sets of WASI artifacts that are an identical digest between the two because they didn't have unique content in the config. And what happens when they're not unique? People that depend on them being unique do bad stuff. Um, okay. So to, to give you an example, um, there, there are some people that were thinking about making sign tools that were based on just the config digest. That way they could put the signature inside of the image manifest. That was not a good plan. They decide to go other directions. But just doing a Docker image LS on your machine, all of the container image IDs on Docker today are the container 
or the config ID, not the manifest ID. Uh, this is why the I love how it your uh your camera thought the thumbs down happened, Calvin, and then it seemed like it froze your camera. Cause you know what? We have an emoji in our in my Slack called LOL sob. This is this is LOL sob. Okay, so um <laughs> oh, okay. I was unintentional, it. but it actually <laughs> <laughs> I know that's why it was funny. I knew it couldn't have been intentional, but it was pretty entertaining. Um, okay, root fs, good to have. Anything else we should have in this config, this config type, um, for for context around modules or components or whatever we need to, or do we think this is a pretty good first place to work the, from? The good to have just gives me the Ghostbusters feedback of you know, okay, don't cross the streams. Good pro tip. Thanks. Let's move on. <laughs> Um, so, so, sorry. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Sorry, James. I know you're on phone, so sometimes it's a pain. Um, I, I was wondering, like, does so Helm has an artifact? Do they do something similar with the root FS to to avoid similar situations? Most likely, I can double check. Yeah, I'd have to double check too, but I also think they could get away with it because it's purely artifact, and ours is like a ours is like a runnable thing. It's it's a little like people are gonna be like. Run Wazi is the example, right? Like they're gonna be we're gonna be running it inside of inside of like a, a Docker container D kind of thing. So um I I would imagine that we would probably need this anyway. Okay. Okay, so we have just a little bit of time. I think we've already decided on this, but I want to make it official or not official. We talked about entry points here, and we kind of settled on um index zero of the layers being the entry point into an application when it gets reassembled if it's the exploded view or whatever but it's going to be the entry part of the of the final like component you're running um so that would be like the the thing that contains the the final like world import exports those kind of things before we like reassemble everything in an exploded view but like the the idea of like what's the entry point and the entry point should be the first one is what we've been saying do we like that or does this need a further discussion that we don't have time for right now? Quick circle Seems back to the Helm way. question. Yeah. Um, Helm charts do not put that in their config, but they do put version numbers and chart names and other unique fields in there. So you wouldn't have two different charts with the same digest unless they were the exact same chart name and the exact same version number. Yeah, so I, that's what I was wondering is if we could potentially use some information in that component other thing that would make it unique, but we can maybe revisit that and talk about the entry point. Here. Yeah, if people have any ideas there, I'm I'm all game for it because the, the issue still is that like we could share um, we could have the exact same config otherwise um, that's like used across multiple components, but like, do we, do we force like the identify identification of like that component? Cause like the thing is, is it's just the SHA eventually, right? Like the tags are just pointers at the SHAs inside of OCI. So like putting saying like, oh, this was tagged as version two of my component feels kind of like, like it could be somewhat janky, especially since tags in, in an OCI context are rather ephemeral. Um, so if we have ideas, I'm all game because people are going to look at this and be like, say what? So, um, <laughs> but if, if, if that's what we have to do, we have to do it. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm also in favor of finding what's the, the least bad thing and least, uh, jarring thing and definitely root of will be confusing, but yeah, if we have to, I guess we have to, but, but if there's something else that would actually satisfy today's know use cases that yeah, nice. my main motivation would be here that if this if this is used by different parts of tooling i'd rather make sure we're compatible with those those parts of the tooling if they're like because you were saying brandon that they actually read the like root fs thing and then grab all the shahs and stuff is that correct so because they read this field then i'd rather this field be present so it doesn't break there there might be um 
I don't want to say there definitely are, but people write code out there that parses this file without even checking to see the manifest type on it. To me, so sometimes it. in the web platform, there will be some terrible ancient corner, corner, corner case feature. And people are like, really? Is that really the spec? And then they'll say, does anyone actually depend on this? Can we just cut off the swart and maybe nobody will actually notice? And so sometimes a browser will just silently do an experiment where they just, in like a beta channel, disable the terrible feature or disable the terrible old behavior and see if anyone complains. And if a year goes by, nobody complains. They're like, well, I guess nobody depends on it. And then you tell everyone and everyone just cuts off the word and you change the spec. So sometimes you can just get away with it because, and, and you just sort of do it a little experiment. So one option is, is if we have a hypothesis that something is good enough, we, you know, that all we need is that the content hash is different, but that's it. All we need is some unique ID. You, you can start with that, see if anyone complains. And then if they do, then you, you, you fix it. So we might actually already be doing that with the um, run, part of the Runwazi OCI stuff that we have in place now, because I'm not putting the layers in the diff IDs because container D would think they were actual file system layers. And so then we, they're, just, they're just not there. They're just in the top layer. So we, we might already be doing that. Um, and so, um, yeah, we, but we can revisit this, I think. Should we uh, surface this one to the main group? It, um, it's worth throwing this question over to the main OCI group because yeah. you can get some people that run registries and other stuff in there that can give you a little bit more feedback on runtimes, registries, stuff like that, that might care. And I, I can do that for you on Thursday. Okay, thanks, Brandon. That's very helpful. Thank you. One other field to think about in here is config has labels. And I know a lot of people like their labels on things. Um, you, it, At least I'm thinking of like UIs on top of container images. If you're thinking of registries that put up UIs, a lot of them pull up layers, labels. This is just like a map of string string, right? It's the exact same syntax yeah. as an annotation. Okay, that's what I thought. So just map string string, very easy. Okay. And that's inside a config, unfortunately. Inside the config, like this config right here, like that, it's not up at the top level is what you're saying. It's, um, or no, you're saying it's inside of this config right config. here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we know we at least, at least need that, everybody. So, oops, did not need to do that. Um, so let's. Uh... And and like I say, consider this optional. If you're making a new thing, you might just say, "Look, we're not going to do that. We're going to do annotations and be done with it." Any thoughts there? That can be the. That's a quick decision. Do people want to just do annotations, or do we want to lean into the existing stuff with conf config dot label? I would say annotations. <laughs> I am all good with annotations. So I will add that here in just a second since we're getting close to time. Don't want to take over those, people's. <laughs> those are up in the image manifest. You don't need to do that. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. The annotations are straight on them. OK, sweet. We don't even have to do yeah. that. Done. I'll make sure I, I add an example up here, though. OK. We'll finish that shortly. So. Thanks, everyone. So next time, we're going to talk about um, entry point and see if we have any other ideas around um, the root FS. I will probably not be here. Um, yeah, I, I'm almost certainly not. I'm going to go do a little mini vacation before the conferences I have in Europe. So I will be out of office the next time this meeting happens. So um, I, I'm OK going ahead and just continuing forward without me. That's fine. Um, but James, will you be available on on that day to run everything? Is it on the twelfth? Uh, yes, I believe so. Let me look at my calendar over here. Yes, I should. Be here yeah, that's the twelfth February. Uh, if it, or sorry, March twelfth. Yeah, and is is QCon that week? Should we cancel that? QCon's the next week, but the um, 19th. Okay. Yeah, Wasmio is that week, so I'll already be in Europe to go to Wasmio. Or uh, later, uh, like the next day is when it starts. So um, that's why I'll already be there. But yeah, if you're going to be here and can run it, that's fine. So I'll make a note in the 
the well, meeting notes that we still need to talk about entry point and then if we can work around root fs and we'll cover that next time and then i think we'll be mostly there question mark um so uh that'd be great all right thank you okay thanks everyone have a great day and i'll uh, see you all in a little while uh,